discussing today is getting the most out of the technology that you already have, right? I think uh, Zapier is pretty much a household name in the real estate space by now. And um, ultimately, most of you are probably already using it. However, there's a lot it can do that a lot of people don't realize, right? And for those of you who aren't familiar, Zapier is able to take two pieces of technology that otherwise don't talk to each other and make them talk to each other. So that's the five second uh, ex explanation of Zapier. Now what Will does, he's one of only two people qualified by Zapier to do what he does. And I'm not gonna butcher his work. So I'm gonna let him talk about it. But we're going to discuss today the power of Zapier, what mm -hmm. exactly it can do to improve your efficiency working with your existing pieces of technology. And um, that is going to be really the, the, the topic for today. Um, awesome. And with that being said, I'm going to shut up and kick it over to you, Will. Cool. Well, honestly, I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited to talk a little bit about Zapier and automation. Um, this is honestly one of my favorite things to do um, is, is evangelize this opportunity we have to take back the world's creativity that we're currently wasting on manual effort and put it back into the bottom line and to the lives we want to live. Um, a good friend of mine uh, invited me to come join a tech incubator several years ago. Um, and when he, he invited me out there, he said, you know, um, we are about um, – living, um, excuse me, working to live, not living to work. Um, and, and that's what I think Zapier's mission is. That's what data automation's mission is, is, is taking back some of that creativity and put, pushing it back to where we need to go. So I'm going to share my screen here. We got a little presentation to, to, to share with you guys Love on, it. on a little more about what Zapier is. So we're going to go into some deeper aspects of that. Um, and to throw it out there, we're, we're preferred development partners for lots of different SaaS companies. And we're actually one of the only ones in the world who has all of the certifications that, that come to the low-code, no-code connection platforms that are out there. So uh, we're, we're, we try to be on the cutting edge of what's possible in the, the low-code, no-code space um, as far as workflows are concerned. I think the name kind of gives it away, but can you define that for us real quick? Low code, yeah. no code? Yeah. So, so low code, no code is a fast moving movement um, these days where basically the coding technologies that were needed to create applications, um, iOS apps, Android apps, uh, web apps, all of those sorts of things have now uh, reached a point uh, where there are people who have created um, tools that can whip out those sorts of platforms without having to draw any line of code. So um, like if you wanted to create an applications directory, for example, um, like, like a no code solution for an, a, an integration platform like me, I just got off the phone a few minutes ago with a company that can literally create me hundreds of landing pages with no code. So, so Love like, that. yeah, I mean, it's really, really powerful. So, so if they're creating solutions like that for me, what are they creating for, for, for um, real estate agents and, and, and businesses in general? So low code, no code means there is a, a movement where we've automated the code. We've taken the coding part out of the mix um, and getting there. So that doesn't mean that you, you can't stop thinking about it. We're gonna go through that in the presentation a little bit, but that's what low code, no code means is being able to automate or build an app uh, with little to no code um, and do that by using, you know, one of the, one of the many platforms that are out there that do that. That's great. That's going to make technology accessible to people like real estate agents and myself who doesn't, who don't have any personal experience coding anything. Correct. Yep. That's, that's the whole idea is to create a movement where we really start to eliminate some of those manual processes. Um, oh a good friend of mine who is the CEO of RPA Tools calls it a revolution. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a low code, no code revolution where we are going to enable, you know, uh, Sally or, or Jim who are, um, you know, just in love with pies to create a pie baking shop that, that functions out of their home and they have all of the things you would need to 
create an app where somebody can choose all the ingredients they want in their pie, hit submit, and it you know pops up on a tablet inside their inside their home kitchen, and they make it and deliver the pie. I love so, it. So like that sort of thing is 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 what's possible um, with some of these low code no code solutions. That's great. Thanks so much for that. Let's yeah. Get, let's let's kick it off. We're kicking it off here. So. Um, Data Automation, who we are, we're an automation and integration consultancy based out of Athens, Georgia. Um, my name is Will Christensen. I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of Data Automation. As I mentioned before, we're approved development partners for many companies, including Zapier, ShipStation, Skubana. Those are more e-commerce centric platforms, but we are, we are um, out there helping people do this. We're sister companies to a company called Seller Labs, which is very heavy in the automation space for Amazon. Um, sellers, and um, we're part of a tech conglomerate called Roundsphere. So um, this is a, a company that helps start other companies. Okay. okay. Um, so let, let's dive in here. This is our, our agenda today. We're going to help you identify how to know what to automate and what not to automate. Okay. Um, we are also going to uh, figure out how to automate. So we're going we're gonna to actually look at some of the process of automation. We're going to understand what Zapier is. So we're going to go a bit deeper than just a platform that, you know, pushes data back and forth. We're going to give you some of that knowledge. And then we're actually going to go in and show you here are some of the templates and things like that that Zapier provides to kind of give some of that. So we're focusing today a lot on Zapier, but I want to point out that there are lots of platforms out there that do different things. And uh, it's important to note that, you know, just because it's not in one doesn't mean you shouldn't be looking um, at some of the other platforms that are out there, like Integra Matter or some of the other ones that are out there. Okay. okay. Makes sense. So let's start with what to automate, not what not to automate. And, and I mean, you could envision me holding a skull and, you know, to be or not to be, right? <laughs> this really is the question. You, you have to decide when it's time to automate or not to automate. We started a podcast um, called Automate, Delegate, Eliminate because those three things are what anybody needs to do in order to scale up a business beyond just one person or to create a business that creates that lifestyle that you're looking for, right? So automate, delegate, eliminate, what to automate, what not to automate. We've got to decide how to appropriately tack tackle this. So I've created a series of litmus tests that you can use to make sure that you're doing this correctly and that you're not funneling time into trying to automate something that shouldn't be automated. So the first, uh, first thing I would tell you is 15-1-1. So pretty easy to remember, you think 9-1-1, right? But, but replace it with a 15, 15-1-1. And what 15-1-1 stands for is 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a week, or 15 minutes, um, a, a, or excuse me, 15 minutes a day, an hour a week, or an hour a month. So okay. if, if the item you're doing is going to take you more than that, now remember, look at what, what, what's common between those three. It's that it's repeating. It's happening again and again and again. So if you find something, and, and when I get the automation itch, trust me, I get it. Sometimes I want to dive in and I'll, I'll, I'll be like, oh, this is going to be so manual. I'm going to do what data automation said, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to automate. Well, if you don't stop and say, is this something that's going to happen again? You're going to spend a lot of time figuring out how to press the button once and then be like, oh, crap. I just spent five hours automating a task that would have taken me two hours to do manually, and it's never happening again. So okay. that's, R that's ROA negative, right? So 1511. Okay. The next thing I would, I would say is how long would it take you to teach someone else to do this? And so the, this is the litmus test that I use for complexity. If the item that you're going to automate takes you more time than it does to actually do it, so more than 15 minutes a day, more than an hour a week, or more than an hour a month, and you need to teach that to someone 10, 15, 20 times, it's probably not the best fit for automation. And if you haven't really delved too deeply into what can be automated, I can guarantee that you're going to have other things that are that simple. So think copying and pasting. So, so one of my first jobs um, out of college, I was the low man on the totem pole at an agency and I had to do 15 hours of copying and pasting. To teach me how to do it, it only took one or two times of that 15 hour process, me watching someone do it before I was like, okay, I know how to do this. So okay. you can imagine there were tons of parts of that process that were extremely automatable. And that's actually the, where the genesis of data automation came from is I started to dig in and teach myself 
how mm-hmm. to do that um, automatically. So I took that 16 hour. I love yeah, that word. Automatable. Yep. What is automatable um, here? So, so, I mean, honestly, that I tell people, get out a sticky note, write 1511 on it. And then what you need to do is, is start writing down everything that's taking you more than that, more than those times. And then right next to it, I would draw an, a line down the side and say, okay, um, how often is this happening? So tick off, tick off, you know, go over a couple of weeks and, and tick it off. And then another line and say, all right, how long would it take me to teach someone else to do this? And if you look at it and it's the same amount of time to do it as it would to teach it, those are the ones I would start on as far as what's automatable. Okay. Okay. Um, the reason I, I focus on that and I push so hard on it is I find that one of the biggest pitfalls that people have with automation is they get stuck trying to automate things that shouldn't be automated. And then they just give up on automation completely. Interesting. They're trying to pick something that is too difficult to automate first. Okay? They're trying to shove a round peg in a square hole and they're trying to do it to a point where they get worn out. So when they find their round, their square hole to put their square peg into, they're already past the- Yep. Yeah. Well, and at that point they've given up because a lot of, so I talked to a lot of people about a lot about automation and one of the biggest hangups that I've seen is, oh yeah, I tried Zapier or I tried Integromat or I tried, you know, Googling that. And I spent like an afternoon and I didn't actually get anything done. It was just a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And so the, the only you do that twice you do it twice, you waste an afternoon, and you're like, yeah, whatever, I'll just keep doing it manually. It's better to just get it done. Mm-hmm. And so, so it's really important that you find the low-hanging fruit up for automation first so that you can see some ROI positive, so that you can spend two or three afternoons automating it, and you're still going to see ROI positive because this thing is currently taking you more than an hour a freaking week. So mm-hmm. you tell me, if I spend several afternoons, let's say that I spend eight, nine hours doing that. Well, if I'm only doing nine hours a week, I found ROI positivity in two months, right? Yeah. So like, you know, eight weeks go by and it doesn't matter that I spent nine hours automating it. I'm mm-hmm. now positive. So sure. it's very important to find those things that have enough ROI hidden underneath them. So what's not a good fit for automation? Let's dig into that. When you begin to automate something, so now that you've got your list, you look at that top item on the list and you say, where's the data now? And that could be anything. Where does the process start is another way to ask this question, right? What what is the beginning of where this goes? Then I wanna ask, where does the data need to go? Then I'm gonna ask, what needs to happen to it in between? So maybe you're pulling data out of a Google sheet and you're trying to get it into an email and you gotta do a customer lookup in the middle. Right. So, okay. so those are kind of the flow parts of what's going on. The reason I, I look at these, these questions so, so closely is if you take these questions, you copy and paste them, you put them into an Upwork post or a Fiverr post or a free up post, or you send an email to data automation saying, Hey, help me out with this. If you answer these questions, I can skip half of our first phone call and jump right into the automation. And I'm going to do it more effectively than I could before. So whether you're automating on your own or whether you're automating with help, these four questions are going to help you really get the nuts and bolts of what needs to be built. I find a lot of people who come to me and say, so I'm I'm using Salesforce and uh, like NetSuite or I'm using, you know, Salesforce and MailChimp and I want to automate. And then we have to spend a half an hour on the phone talking about what they're even talking about because they haven't answered these questions. So if you can't answer these questions, it's not a good fit for automation yet because you haven't defined what you're trying to automate. Yeah, let's be very clear here that automation, you you can't come into a conversation just saying, I want to automate without having an end in mind right? You need to know the beginning, you need to know the end, and you need to know what you want to accomplish. Just coming blindly into a conversation of, I want to automate my business, and not having any thought after that, just saying, I want to automate my business, that's going to put you in a really tough situation when you're working with someone, uh, because that person isn't going to have any concept of what part of your business you want or need automated. Yep, absolutely. 
And so we then start to kind of, we can start putting real numbers in here. How often is the, is the team doing this? How much time is being used executing it? And remember, I gave you some rules so that you don't even have to really think about this because I can guarantee you there's, there's gonna be ROI. But this is where you can start, okay, wait, hold on. Um, I'm paying that individual $12 an hour. Or I'm paying that individual $20 an hour. It's currently taken them an hour a week to do this. And if I automate this, how much money do I save? So you can put a real dollar amount against what it is that you're trying to do. So that all gets us to the point of, should we automate, right? Should sure. we tackle this? So sure. some things will thrive and bolster your business when they're automated. Others need human intera interaction. So we're going to talk about that next. What shouldn't you automate it? What, what's not a good fit for automation? So, so as you look at that, oh, sorry, here's some examples. So in a, in a minute, I, I got ahead sure. of myself there. Um, these are some good examples of things um, inside Chime that I believe are solid examples of what, what, where, where we can go. So where are you copying and pasting? Creating new leads in MailChimp when they hit the right stage in Chime. You can totally mm -hmm. you know, push those right over, get them into an automated email campaign or a drip campaign. Um, notify cooperating agents of activity that's going on inside the pipeline so they can stay on top of what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Looking at retrieving leads from a lead source like Facebook and putting them inside Chime. Um, mm -hmm. Stop, you know, copying and pasting uh, from your email. So let's say that you have something like um, a Zillow or one of these other platforms that's sending you leads. Mm -hmm. Stop copying and pasting those leads into Chime. There are tools built for that. So, so that's, that's the sort of thing that you're, you're looking for. And these are common examples of, of things that should um, be automated. Okay, so now let's get to where I was going of the what not to automate. Okay. So some customer interactions are absolutely something that you should not automate at all. Um, and, and what I find is uh, things that are around finances. Um, retrieving information from QuickBooks is great. Automated billing, mm, you probably need some human interaction. So let's say that you know, obviously it, when you send a customer an invoice, if you send them that invoice, they're immediately gonna think, oh, they're done. Well, if they go check and you're not done, like imagine if you sent the bill for your commission before the house was actually sold, right? Like, it's like, what? Like this doesn't work at all. So, <laughs> so it's super important that you allow um, human eyes to be on things before they are um, automated to make sure that you're getting what you need to when you need to, and, and you're looking at that. So I tell people to avoid things that involve a lot of, um, a lot of uh, emotion. Sure. So, so if there's sure. a lot of emotion tied to that interaction between you and the client, not a good place to automate. And another thing that I tell people is, be very upfront about the fact that it's automated. Don't try to cloak and dagger and make it look like it's something that's uh, that's not automated, even though it is automated. Sure. So important to be that, you know, I put at the top of the message, hey, this is an automated message. The reason we're sending it to you is because we feel like it provides this value. Take a look and, and, and give us back information or feedback. So okay. people, as long as the automation provides value to them, they don't care that it's automated. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, and people are getting warmer and warmer to automation. Well, if the automation really can, if it's not impersonal and, and doesn't go there, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about how to automate, okay? So we've talked a lot about what to automate, what not to automate. We've talked about the things you should know before you automate. Let's mm -hmm. get into the how. I'm going to be saying the word automate in my sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what happens to me every night. Okay. <laughs> So your number one friend when you're searching for an automation tool is going to be something that you guys are going to, like, I'm going to throw this out there and you're like, really? Seriously? Did he just say Google? Um, really, Google. Google is your number one friend when it comes to automation. And the reason I tell you that is because there is a new SaaS platform coming out every single day that does a lot of what you're looking for. So if you literally type in, I want to automatically get emails from a LinkedIn search, guess what? There's already a platform out there that can help you grab that stuff and get where you're going. And, and if, you, if you just thought, oh, I thought of that before, but I never Googled it, go Google it, okay? 
the number one thing that I tell people about Google is go down to the very bottom of the page and look for what other people search for when they search for the thing you're looking for. There are mm. going to be keywords that Google suggests and that Google's trying to teach you the vocabulary to use to find the right tool. Mm -hmm. So most people ignore the suggested terms down at the bottom. And the reason they ignore them is because they figure they know better. I've discovered that yeah. nine times out of 10, when I begin my process and start searching mm -hmm. for something, I don't know what to call it. Okay? Yep. So I'm just going to quickly verbally give you a one sentence. Here's what some of these things do. This is one of the most valuable parts of the, of the presentation because these are tools that some of them you're going to know what they do. Some of them you're going to have no idea. Okay. Real-time oh, board, I, I, actually, I actually need to update this logo. Real-time board is actually called Miro now, M-I-R-O. Um, and it really is what it sounds like. It is a platform that allows you to real-time whiteboard with anybody, anywhere, and draw and put sticky notes up. So you no longer need to have a whiteboard in front of you. In fact, I prefer it over a whiteboard that I have to take a picture of and, and, and draw because I can search inside it. It's, it's completely, like I can have 100 people working on the same sticky notes at the same time. So That's it's cool. like a Google Doc, except for that it's a, a whiteboard. And, and the reason I put this up here in, in terms of like, oh, well, what does that help you automate? Well, remember, we have to build a plan. What to automate? Where's data now? Where does it need to go? Perfect place to do that is a diagramming tool like Real-Time Board, now called Miro. Okay. Okay. I'm digging Airtable is a relational database similar to Google Sheets, but actually totally different from Google Sheets in the term that you can actually connect two pieces of data together. So like contacts and interactions. So if you mm -hmm. have a spreadsheet, contacts in one, interactions in the other, can't connect those together. In Airtable, you can. Okay. Interesting. Airtable is a, a great way to, like if you want to do properties and then you have units inside the properties, fantastic way to list out your properties and the units. And there's a whole bunch of no code solutions that can sit on top of Airtable and basically make it a directory. Airtable actually integrates with Webflow. So you could have all of your properties listed in here and Webflow could be the front end of your website. Like you don't need to go to all of the different places for some of that. It's just powerful. Interesting. There. Okay. Pixabay is a place where you can get fantastic images for absolutely free. Um, Notion is a wiki-based cool piece of software where you can basically structure the data however you want and then display it internally or externally. The Great Suspender is one of my favorite automation tools for if you have too many tabs like me. I, if you look at my browser, I've always got a hundred and some odd tabs. Fantastic tool to suspend those tabs, make so they don't use too much resources. Lumen Screen Castify automates the way we communicate with people. So mm -hmm. you can take a quick screen capture and send that over. If you're ever reporting a bug inside a tool, this is the best way to report that bug. You will spend a thousand times less time set, like sending that email and explaining what out. happened. Yep. So beautiful tool there. Hunter and Snovio are about pulling out email addresses out of like, let's say that you know the person's name, but you don't know their email address. You can go pull, put in their name, put in the domain name associated with the company and it'll spit out the right email address for where you're trying to go. So, Ooh, it's yeah. good for me to know. Yes, you, yeah, put that one in your back pocket there. It's a, it's a good one. So if you're doing any B2B relationships, let's say you're an agent and you're looking to find a whole bunch of people to start sending you referrals um, that are like, let, let's say mortgage brokers or other things like that, go out, find those individuals on LinkedIn, find their names, and you're going to be able to kind of start picking up and looking at some of those different pieces. Pulse and that other one down there is iMessage. Helps you do a lot of text messaging back and forth, and you can do it from your computer. So if you have an Android phone and you're annoyed that you don't have iMessage, go check out Pulse. I don't get any sort of commission for that. Um, they're a fantastic platform that allows you to text right from your computer, um, and I love that one. G Suite, oh, that's, cool. that's that one's pretty straightforward. Everybody knows a little bit about what G Suite does. Zapier, we've talked about. We're going to talk about a little more in a minute. Integromat's very similar to Zapier, so we're going to talk about that in a minute. Dexy.io and Selenium HQ. These are tools that allow you to actually automate the web. So you go in and you want to do something on a website and it's happening over and over and over and over and over again. You can actually automate that process by making a bot that, that goes off in Dexy.io or Selenium to kind of do what you were trying to do. These ones down at the bottom um, right here are all about um, automations inside calendars. So Mixmax, a, a suite of tools that you can use to like track emails. Calendly and MeetingBird are all about, um, 
you know, handing someone a list. Actually, if you're not using Calendly yet, Calendly yet, um, oh, yeah. highly recommend this for booking showings and uh, looking at all of the yeah. different options for for that kind of thing. Powerful. That's powerful a great tool. tool. Also, quick fun, I guess, a little pro tip with Calendly for all of you using Chime or other programs that allow you to mass text. Uh, I've had some clients in the past successfully take their Calendly link and mass text it to a bunch of leads that they never that they've never been able to actually connect with and say, hey, you know, I know you've been busy. We, have, we haven't been able to connect. Schedule a 15 minute call on my, on my Calendly link so I can make sure. I'm sending you the right properties, you know, that, that you're interested in and they're able to book calls with people they've never been able to talk to before. So that's definitely huge. recommend Calendly. Huge, huge, huge. Calendly. I mean, the, the, the act of going out and I mean, think about it, that lead wants to connect with you. You know, it, it, it just skips all of that process. Okay, fine. Yes. Let's meet mm -hmm. like, like super, super powerful in terms of, in terms of what's there. Yeah. All right. Let's get into what Zapier is. Let's, let's, let's pick this apart. So Zapier breaks down workflows into triggers, actions, and searches. And that's what it's all about. It's about moving that data around to the different places so that it gets where you need it to go. Okay. Has 2,000 plus integrations. This is Huge. one of the reasons why you've heard me talk about Zapier, Zapier, Zapier. They have developed a system and an ecosystem that is now so, so powerful in terms of what's there. Um, the, the reason it's so powerful is because everybody is now saying, oh, you know what? I probably should be integrating with Zapier. So they are getting a new integration built on their platform every single day, and it's not being built by the Zapier team. So Zapier has a, a real momentum that they've discovered uh, with creating these integrations. So pretty powerful for that. So let's, let's get into this. It's an automation workflow tool. So you can see Chime there. You can see several other really, really powerful apps, Gmail, Slack, Twitter, uh, Google Calendar, Trello, Google Drive, Facebook pages, Typeform, you name it, it's probably in here. And if it's not, it's actually not that difficult to add it to it. So if you ever come across something where you're like, oh, it's just, the, the action or the search or the trigger that I wanted wasn't in here. Data automation can build those for a matter of a couple hundred bucks uh, for you custom. Okay. So if you're a SaaS company, you're watching this, definitely not a couple hundred bucks to get it for you to make it so your entire user base can go, but I can build a custom web hook or a custom uh, trigger step using code or, or, or whatever else to go in there to make it so that that one trigger action or search that you're missing is there. Okay. So let's talk about triggers triggers are listeners. Okay. So the best way to think about listeners and, and kind of what that looks like is it is a, a think of someone listening at a door. Okay. So they listen at a door and they're listening for something very specific to happen inside that door. So let's say that they're listening for a new plate of food to be ready. They listen for that new plate of food. Somebody dings a bell, new plate of food. They open the door, pick up that plate of food and pass it on to the server right? The server is kind of what Zapier does in the middle and it pushes it over to a new place where the action is going to be to eat that food, right? So the trigger is the listener. So the, 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 the triggers that we have available inside Chime are lead group changed. So this is when a lead moves to a selected group, okay? Um, lead pipeline chain. This is when a, a, a lead is moved to a selected pipeline and then also new lead. So any one of these, we can listen at the door for that action to happen. So remember, what was our first question? Where's the data now? Well, if the data is inside Chime, these are the things that we can listen for to happen and then push it to 2000 plus applications. So think of it as Legos. This is the Lego I have on the listener side of things. Okay. Any questions on that, Randy? No, I think that's super clear, you know. Okay, awesome. So this is a, a screenshot from the inside. You can see here, I can choose the trigger event and, and then I continue through that workflow. All right, let's, let's dive in and let's talk about actions, okay? Actions are all about creating something or doing something inside the platform. It could be deleting a contact. It could be updating a contact. It could be creating a new lead. So this is where the magic comes in. So let's say the trigger is new email comes in from Gmail and the action is create new lead inside Chime. Okay, now you do need to have something in the middle there that extracts the data um, so that you have the right data going in. 
And there's two platforms I'll mention for that lead specific. There's mailparser.io, which I love. And there's also a mail parsing tool that's built into Zapier that sometimes works depending on how complicated your template is. It's completely free. So I would okay. try the one inside Zapier. If it doesn't work, check out mailparser.io and it's going to do it. If you're doing it in bulk and it's just not handling it, um, Data Automation has a tool as well that we use for parsing that we can hook up to Zapier as well. So really, really powerful in terms of what's there. Okay, so let's talk about searches. Searches is where we go and we look something up. So the, why would you want to search? Why would you want to search inside a platform? Well, one of the reasons you search inside a platform is maybe you don't want to create a duplicate. So let's say that you're using another CRM or another tool alongside what you're using inside Chime. When you want to push that over there to that other, that other lead list, you don't want to create a duplicate. So you want to search inside that system, see if that record exists, and if it does, create it. If it doesn't, you want to update it. So that's what a search is all about. It's about bringing data in so that, that you can then decide what to do with it in another system. Okay. That's what a search is. All right, so what is a zap? It is a trigger, action, and a search. So if you see up here, here's the new leads on Facebook, okay? And you can see right here, I've got a, a step in here where I'm gonna pull out some text or I'm gonna format the text. Let's say that I'm gonna break apart the first name and the last name, that's totally possible. So remember, where's the data now? It's in Facebook. Where's the data need to go? It needs to go into Chime. What needs to happen to it in between? We need to break apart the first and last name so that we can put it into the proper fields. So that is a zap, all encompassed, that's a zap. Turn it on, runs in the background every time all of this kind of pushes through. Okay. All right, so that's a, a workflow or a zap. All right, let's get in and let's talk about um, a little bit of, of what we're going in here. So we talked about triggers, action searches. Let's talk about filters. So filters are a really powerful way to make it so that you can stop data you don't want to go in there. So let's say that you wanted to send yourself a text message every time a lead came in on a house that was above a certain value, okay? Um, because obviously, you know, commission-wise, you're gonna make more money on those houses, so you wanna pay, pay closer attention to them. When that lead comes in, you can strip out that value and you can add that to a filter step and say, only bug me about this if it's above a certain value. So that's what a filter does. Allows you to kind of do a greater than uh, stopping point to get in there. Okay, so let's talk about templates. Templates are one of my favorite parts about Zapier. Um, it allows you to kind of create a customized view of the world, so to speak, um, and you can see what it is that's going on. And, and all of these are good examples of templates that Chime has available for you to kind of just get in there. So we've, we've talked about that. I've, I've talked about triggers, actions, and searches that may feel like it's a lot to go in and figure out. Well, the good news is it's actually not as bad to figure out as you think, because if you click on one of these buttons inside Zapier and it says, try it, it's actually gonna pre-fill a lot of the annoying parts of this for you, okay? okay. So it's going to automatically show you um, some of what's there. And I'm actually gonna show you real quick um, what that looks like, um, just briefly. I'm gonna drag over uh, a window here. So I just clicked on that button and up it comes and you can see it's asking me to do this. And it actually, did you see how it put a filter step down here? Or excuse me, a text step. Let's go look at this text step. You can see how it already has the full name variable in here. And if I were to authenticate here, so just you know, choose which ones I wanna, what, which one I wanna connect to, it's then gonna push down and allow me to go get into those next pieces and, and go through the whole step. So every single piece of this is kind of pre-filled and, and allows you to, to have all of those steps. So instead of you having to figure out, oh, I gotta put this space thing in the middle to separate the, the full name, it's already done for you, okay? So that's the power of a template and it allows you to just click, 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 authenticate, authenticate, turn it on, okay? So if you thought, oh crap, I'm gonna have to think about how to do this for any of these examples, no thinking involved, just typing oh, in passwords. I, I really hope I don't have to think. <laughs> just, just type in the passwords, save them in the, the super encrypted everything. I mean, you'd be amazed at what I store in Zapier. They're very, very safe. You just authenticate and move forward. Love it, yeah. that's great. All right, so, so what, a, a, you saw it kind of in there before. Um, this is the step-by-step the step instructions that I would recommend, okay? Choose the trigger app, 
select the trigger, select the account you want to authenticate to find the parameters and test. Now, when you've got it all in there, click, 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 authenticate, and you're in. This testing part of the step is super valuable. It's the part of the step that actually brings in that lead and shows you a sample of what's going on so that you can then decide, is this doing what it should be doing, okay? So okay. after you've gone through and chosen your trigger app and tested, then you can go through and choose your action app and test that. So you select the action, go down and authenticate, set up the template, and away you go, okay? So pretty powerful. One thing I will, this is like pro tip in terms of Zapier, when you're naming things, get in there and actually name what it's doing. Give it a name you'll understand. Like, like if it's LoopNet or whatever else is sending you in those leads, go in and don't, don't call it mail parser to chime because mail parser doesn't mean anything to you. Call it Zillow to chime or, or you know, this real estate partner of mine that always sends me leads in the same way, put his name on it to chime so that you know where it's coming from. It'll, it'll save you hours and hours when you're trying to figure out where the flip did this come from? Yep. <laughs> why, no. why is this missing the first name? Uh, yeah, you go back make, and make sure you that. have a naming convention that you will always use so that you always understand what is going on. Well, and, and that naming convention, remember it doesn't have to be perfect the first time, but please have a naming convention. Like, like just create, don't just go with whatever Zapier puts in there, put something else up in the top mm -hmm. and over time you'll develop it. So don't freeze on the naming convention, but do kind of uh, push it out there and kind of see um, where it's going. So in conclusion, we now know how to identify what not to automate and what to automate. We know how to automate because we know how to Google and find the different solutions that are in there. We understand Zapier and how it works, at least at a high level. And we also have been given a brief glimpse into what it takes to automate using a template. Now, obviously, Zapier 102, Zapier 103, we could go deep in terms of, you know, six weeks of courses that would teach you all of the ins and outs of what's here. This is just to give you a taste of that giant hamburger, which is a beautiful automation that gives you where you need to go and, and gets you what you want. Okay. All right. And... Um, you know, open it up, uh, Randy, for any questions from you or, or, or go from there. And if you have more questions, you obviously are welcome to email us over at Data Automation. Um, check us out at dataautomation.com and, and go that way as well. Yeah, absolutely. I would love, if you don't mind, give us a, give us a crash course of, you know, Zapier 102. You know, what is, what are some examples without going into the weeds of some, some of the complexities? Um, because yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely interested in learning what the next step is simply because I, I have no clue. Okay. So, so when I go to a Zapier 102, the thing that I go in Zapier 102, and so this is going to be raw, right? We're going to jump right in and we're going to, we're going to play with some yep. of this, uh, this stuff. I'm going to show you um, some of the way that I test and mess around inside Zapier. And the place I like to start when I do that is I'll go inside and I'll make a spreadsheet, okay? okay? And the spreadsheet acts as our database to kind of see where it's going. So we're just gonna call this, you know, Chime Demo. And I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna create a couple of fields here, right? So I'm gonna go lead name, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna go lead last name. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna go like lead source and lead value, okay? So if you go in and you have a spreadsheet like this that's happening and people are filling it out, we're going to put in my name here, um, and we're going to say that I came from Facebook and that I'm worth a lot, right? Like I'm worth a million dollars, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're worth I'm way more than that, Will. Way more than that. Way All right, so, so let's, say that, let's say that we got, we got these, uh, these different guys in here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one Randy. And um, Randy came in and Randy came from, we're going to say you came from LinkedIn um, just for the, for the sake of it. And, and, you know, let's be honest here. Randy's worth at least a million and one um, <laughs> dollars. So, so as we get in here, this is our spreadsheet. And, and obviously we're just spitballing here and this is a spreadsheet that's out there. And, and we're going to rename this spreadsheet to call it leads. Um, and we can kind of see what's going on here. Now, once I have that spreadsheet, then I can um, start saying, okay, well, where's the data now? 
okay, the data is in this spreadsheet. I got an assistant who's filling out this spreadsheet and they're, let's say that they're lead mining um, by going on social media and they're looking for people inside the friends list associated with this real estate agent who are mentioning things about homes, right? And, and they're, they're capturing their information here and then they need to trigger the real estate agent to get a phone number or something like that. Okay, well, in that situation, you'd come over here to Zapier and I would click this big black button called make a zap, okay? So this big black button takes you into the non-templated version of Zapier. So this would be Zapier 102. What are we gonna do to get this data? Where's the data now? In the spreadsheet, right? So the first place I would go in here is like, okay, let's go sheets. All right, here's Zap, here's the sheets. I'm gonna go choose. Okay, so I got a lot of different options here. I can go get a new spreadsheet row, an updated spreadsheet row. Oh, that's interesting. Let's play with the, the updated spreadsheet row here and see, see what we've got. So inside here, you can see I have a ton of different accounts that have been connected inside my Zapier account. And I'm gonna use this one because that's the one I'm authenticated with already, okay? Um, let me actually, let me show you what that looks like. So if I want to, oh, not that one. If I want to, let's say that it's not, a, not an account that's there, I can actually authenticate it. So it brings it up and it shows, hey, here's all of the different uh, accounts you're signed into for Google. If I click one of those buttons, it's gonna push it right back inside the system to get where it's going. So totally powerful and you can um, remove those credentials at any time if you want to. Now that I have this, I can start to go back and say, okay, well, what was my spreadsheet called? Oh, Chime Demo is what my, my spreadsheet's called, okay? So now I need to go back over here and I need to go find my spreadsheet and it does a decent job of actually pulling it up here so you can see there's Chime Demo, okay? And now, okay, what about the worksheet? Okay, there's my leads worksheet. So like, hold on, let's go back. Was that actually called leads before? There it is, it is called leads. So you can see that it's dynamically going out. I'm getting data out of this spreadsheet and putting it back over. All right, so let's wow. see, you go here and you go, okay, leads, yep, all right. And uh, this is, okay, well, what column do you want all of this to trigger off of? Okay, I wanna show you guys something that a lot of, this is like Zapier power user tip that I, that I this, is, this is one of the things I love doing. Let's say that I wanted to send a text message um, to, to, to these people in here. But, you know, Chime does that, right? There's, there's other things that you can do that. But let's say that there was something specific, something that I wanted to trigger in a different way, or I wanted to send these guys an email. Well, in order to send them an email or a text message, it works either way, let's do a button here that says send text message. Okay, and now let's insert um, a checkbox. Well, Cool, so that means like I kind of made my own platform where I can send a text message or send an, send an email. And I guess if we're gonna do it, we'll, we'll change this back to phone number, just, just for kicks and giggles to show you what it would do. So, um, and now you can all call me because I'm putting my real number in here. Um, <laughs> so, so here, I'm, I do it, I'll help you with automation. Be prepared though, it's, it's yeah. gonna be powerful. So, so as it goes through and we get texted it, and we get texted here, we're gonna be able to go in here and trigger off of a column, okay? And I can choose all of these different columns. Now notice, do you see what it did? Do you remember? Wow. I just barely typed in send text message and it's already there. Let's say if I didn't want to go text message, let's say I wanted to say just send message. If I go in here and I open this up, go to the trigger column and I hit that load more button, do you see how it, uh, oh, it looked interesting. Cute Zapier, you didn't show the coolness. All right, let's say that you had another one here called send email, right? You wanted to do, do two. If I go here and I hit that load more button, cute Zapier, got to refresh the page. So when in doubt, refresh the page. Always, um, always. So, sometimes, you know, just turn it off, turn it on, right? Yeah, All it's right. the next so, step in turning it off and turning it back on. Yes. All right. So do you see how now I do have send message and send email? So mm -hmm. it's, it's automatically going there and, and getting that information for you. If by chance you did another one and then you click the, the, the load more button right here, you can see it's going to pull in the test column. Okay. There we go. So it's, it's go. totally dynamic. We'll bring that in wherever you want. I'm going to do this send message here and I'm going to hit continue. And what it's going to do now is it's going to go get that sample data. Like I was showing you before. See what it did? Hey, look, mm -hmm. here's Randy. I got his information, I got a content hash here. All right, now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say, okay, what, what do I wanna do next? Well, I'm gonna filter it, and I'm gonna say, I only want it when the updates, so remember, this thing's gonna go off when something changes in the send message column. 
If okay. it doesn't go to the send message column, it's not going to do anything else. Okay. So we go here. And now we got to do our filter step. Remember I talked about filters. Here's 102, right? 102 mm -hmm. Zapier. This is how you set up a filter step. So you come down here and you say, okay, I want to make it so that when the send email equals, now currently, what does it say? Send message, um, send, let's see, send email, send message. We're going to do send message. Mm -hmm. When this contains the word and we saw it said false, I'm going to say true. So this is only going to so go off when check, somebody. Yeah. Yep. So when the checkbox gets checked. Mm -hmm. So if we go back here, when this checkbox gets checked, that's what it's, when it's going to do it. Now notice when I highlight over the top of this, do you see what the value is? True. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's showing me a graphical way of showing me that the checkbox are unchecked or checked, but the, the true value behind there is true or false, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave it false for a minute. And it's going to say, hey, uh-oh, the sample data you have um, means that it would not have continued. It would have stopped that, which is what we want. Because when it came in, it was false. So we don't want to check it. Um, we, we don't want it to go anywhere. Okay, now we have this next step. And I'm going to, you know, rather than go, you know, we could do Twilio, but let's say that this is Twilio. We're just, just for testing purposes. We're going to say that this other spreadsheet is, is, is Twilio. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go sent messages. And I'm going to uh, put in a timestamp. And I'm going to push that. So you could choose, and I'll show you where this could go. We could go here and we could say Twilio, right? And I do have Twilio connected for a couple of different, couple, couple of different pieces. And you could call a phone number or send an SMS right here. For the purposes of this demo to show you what it's going through and doing, I'm not going to send it through there. I'm just going to go back to my spreadsheet. And I'm going to go in here and I am going to go create spreadsheet row. And then again, I can connect to my data automation account, same as before, but obviously this could be Twilio. And then here I'm going to choose my chime demo. And then I'm going to go to my worksheet and I'm going to go Twilio. Now I'm going to actually funnel data into sent messages. So here I'm going to pull data from my prior step. I'm going to pull in and say, okay, uh, the lead or the, let, let's do, let's do, we're going to put in Randy and then we're going to put Carol. So you can see I put a space in between there. That basically makes it so Randy Carol is going to go in there. Now, timestamp, pro tip on Zapier. Timestamp Zapier field. If you Google really quick, insert time. So Zapier has this really cool thing called, uh, Zapier meta human now. Most Zapier users don't even know this exists. I can pull that from the air essentially, and it's going to be like, well, what's that? Because there, 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 what there, there were timestamp options, right? I could go up here and I could get like the timestamp associated with. Oh no, there isn't even a timestamp option. Sometimes there's a like time when this ran. There's not in this situation. So we're going to let it put in the time when this ran in this situation. Okay. So there's a Zapier pro tip. All right, so now I do test and review, and you can see it got 1252, 820. Let's go back to our sent messages, and you can see it did, in fact, put in the timestamp of what's there. Okay. Magic. Go! Um, did the media ham take my shirt off, swing it around? Yeah, 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 definitely. We're going we're to do that. All right, so if I turn this on, okay. So now here's the fun part. Zapier sometimes has a delay. So this may not work since it's totally live right now, right? Totally live. But once you get, once you get this in here, you can go back over here and I can be, okay, when I check this checkbox, it should send Will Christensen right here. So we're going to look at it and say, okay, come on, send it over, send it over. I found that this is delayed up to five to 10 minutes, but I can assure you it is going to work. Now let's say that you're looking at it. You're like, oh my gosh, it's not working. This is Zapier 103 in five minutes. This is called the Zapier task log. Perfect. We've got eight minutes. So if you can put this into five minutes, then we're, this we're going pretty, pretty powerful. So if you're kind of like, you're like, like brains are oozing out your ears right now because we've thrown so much information at you. Don't worry. You know, you can go back and watch this again, see where it's going. Ask us for some help to see where it's going. Do you, you see right here, it's not showing me anything. There are no tasks. I've got it narrowed down to this specific one and there are no tasks. It's like, well, oh, come on. 
I've done mm -hmm. this enough times to know there's generally a two to three minute delay on the first one that goes through. Zapier mm -hmm. does claim that this is totally instant. Okay. So it should be totally instant and just kind of pushing it through right now. Pretty normal that I, that I haven't seen it. I've done this enough times to show you where it's going that um, I know without a doubt that it will push that information over to Twilio every time. I have, you'd be, you'd be amazed. I have a bot that I built where it listens for a calendar event on my calendar and then Twilio calls me, calls my cell phone telling me, hey, you're supposed to be here. Wow. I use so, yeah, that. So, you know your way around Zap, Zap here pretty well, huh? I use that as my alarm clock. That's awesome. That's how much I trust Zapier. And, and it is very rarely wrong. So like what, like, like that, that thing, so, so powerful that, that it'll wake you up and, and, you know, you can schedule a wake up call. Right. So pretty That's powerful. And, really and cool. after this, so, so in, in a few minutes, I'll have to go back on Facebook and be like, it worked and send a screenshot or something like yeah, that. Send a screenshot. It's on our, uh, just go to the chime uh, Facebook page. That's where this will. recording will live forever and eternity. And, um, Okay, I would, lo I would so, love to see that screenshot. You, you'll see it come through. It, it, like I said, takes a couple of minutes sometimes to get it there. And, and this is a good example. Now, if you do have a situation where we're talking about Zapier 103, right? Um, if you do have a situation where you're watching this task log and it just never shows up, this is the moment where we would start that Loom video or that Screencastify video and send Zapier a message and say, hey, guys, what did I do wrong here? I have actually, it's been amazing how many times like they'll go in and look at something and they're like, oh, uh, you're missing like this up in this field. And I was like, how did I miss that? So don't be afraid to reach out to Zapier when you get into that. And that's how you can kind of debug and, and watch the task log. Cool. Now. So there you go. Awesome. Zapier 101, 102, and 103 all combined into one hour just, um, to some degree or another. People's brains are oozing out their ears. You know, you my, now have a decent idea of where I've this got goes. brain soup. My, my, <laughs> I've got a soupy brain now. That was really cool, though. I, I mean, I, I definitely underestimated uh, what Zapier could do. And so I appreciate you going through and, and, and giving us a quick view into the 102 and 103 courses. Um, yeah. Well, remember those that step in the middle there. You can actually mm -hmm. do a code step. So if you're if you're listening to this and you're a coder and you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that here because you can't do code. You can do a code step right in the middle of all of that. So if you're a coder and you're like, I'm not gonna use Zapier, you really can you can write Python or JavaScript and do anything you can imagine. Wow. Well, for the one or two people who can code and watch this video, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, you just got to make sure if, if they were commenting about like, well, I don't know about Zapier. Now they know. Now, they now know. we know. If you don't know, now you know. Um, all right. Well, that, that's really awesome. Um, tell us again how we can reach you. Yep. So you can find us uh, at dataautomation.com. Um, you can email me directly if you'd like to, will at dataautomation.com. If you mention this webinar, um, we'll skip some of our initial processes and we'll jump right into automating for you. Especially if you go back and watch this video and you see the part where it says, where's the data now? If you fill out those questions and send it in, my sales rep's gonna have a heart attack and then she's gonna help you automate the crap out of that. So Love mention it. this webinar, we'll give you 30 minutes of what we normally charge 350 an hour for, um, for free. Um, and, and happy to get in there. And that's not obviously the, the normal rate for everything, but, but that's, we, we have some, some pretty powerful stuff called systems design that we do, and we'll jump right into it and help you automate. I love it. That's, that's really exciting. So don't forget, mention this webinar, save yourself some money, automate your business, save yourself some headaches, be more efficient, close more deals. That's what we're here for. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks so much again. I appreciate you. I appreciate the insight you brought today and um, look forward to talking to you next time. Cool. Awesome. Take care. Thanks.